Welcome to this video on S2. Today we're looking at testing the mean of a Poisson distribution. So for this we're looking at that value, that parameter lambda. Now, so far what we've done is we've looked at one tail test and two tail tests, but focused on binomial distribution. In this video, there's nothing really new to learn. We're just gonna apply what we know about how to find one tail and two tail tests or how to apply them to a Poisson distribution. When you do have a two tail test as well, just think when you've got that value of lambda, if the observed value, the value of X or Y that you're testing is greater than it, look at the upper tail. If it's less than it, look at the lower tail. So just a little bit of guidance there. So what I think we'll do on this video is we'll just have a look at a couple of examples, which I'll walk you through, and then I'll give you a few questions and I'll go through the answers at the end of the video as usual, so that you can check um, that you kind of get the, the gist of things. So first let's look at a straightforward example. We've got Poisson distribution, as told in the example, X is seven, that's our observed value. Testing at the 10% significance level, and we've got our two uh, hypotheses, so H0 and H1. Noticing that here this is a does not equal, so it's got to be a two tailed test. Now, I often write essentially, I don't label it notes, but I do often write a few little notes on the side when I'm reading the question just to help me. So, you know, I know that I'm going to be dealing with a Poisson and that value of lambda is actually going to be 4.5. I know I'm dealing with X is 7. I know that it's going to end up being, well, it's 10% significance, isn't it? Which will then be 5% for each tail. So I like to make a few notes as I go along. Um, depending on what's given to me in the question. So we've got H0, and that is lambda is 4.5, and H1, where lambda does not equal 4.5. So we know it's a two-tailed test. Now, same kind of start as usual. Assume H0 is true so that will mean that x is distributed with Poisson distribution and lambda being 4.5 the next thing we need to do is test our value so we'll look at the probability where x is greater than or equal to 7 okay two tails x is 7 and since 7 is above 4.5 that's where we should be looking is the upper tail. Now for this bit, you know, it's discrete data, isn't it? So one minus X being less than or equal to six. And then you can go into your calculator or I'll just pop up the, the results from the table so that you can see them. So as you can see here, we look up the value for six. So 0 0.8311. And then that calculation is 0 0.1689. Now, quite clearly, this is bigger than our 5%, which is 0 0.05. So, therefore, we would say there is insufficient evidence to reject H0. And then your second sentence is where you would link it to the context of the question. And in this case, we don't have any context. So I'll just put, you know, about lambda is 4.5. And that's the question complete. Now, the second example, as you can see, is a lot more wordy, has context to it. So you want to read through it carefully. And like I said before, I tend to make some notes just on the side of the page as I'm going along. So, you know, if we're looking at here, an effect of certain disease is 
that a small number of the red blood cells are deformed. Emery has this disease and the deformed blood cells occur randomly at a rate of 2.5 millilitres of her blood. So you can see the word rate there, that's going to mean it's Poisson. Obviously in an exam it could have been binomial. And then we've got 2.5 per milliliter of her blood. And we have a random sample of 2 milliliters. So 2 times the 2.5 will give me 5. So that is my value of lambda. So if we carry on, um, it's found to contain only one form blood cell so x is going to be one state your hypothesis clearly at the five percent significance level whether or not there has been a decrease so one tilt because we're only we're not looking at if there's been a change just a decrease so now i have enough information to start my question so now i want to set it out properly so let x represent so that's kind of how i'm starting x or y and then you want to take from the question so represent the number of deformed blood cells that occur randomly in two millimeter milliliters of blood so i left the randomly bit out because you didn't need it for for this part now we can then add on that this is a poisson and then that is lambda we don't put in the value of five at this point the next point is when we make our hypotheses so h0 is what we expect so lambda equaling five and H1 is what we're looking for. So this is a decrease. So we want to see it being less than 5. And then we want to assume that H0 is true. So same process each time. So and now we can do our distribution. So it's Poisson where lambda is 5. And the next step then is to calculate it. So we're looking at the probability when x is less than or equal to 1. Uh, and again, you can go to your calculators here. I'll just bring up from the tables. And we can see here it's 0 0.0404. Now, is this smaller than 5%? Yes. Smaller than 0 0.05, isn't it? It's full 5% because it is a one-tailed test. Now, since it's smaller than that, that means that we can reject H0. So, first sentence, there is sufficient evidence. To reject H0. Or you could say... You know there is significant or enough evidence anything like that but basically about <coughs> rejected h0 or you could say there's sufficient evidence to accept h1 so you could spin it that way um so that's your first sentence and then your second final sentence is to bring it within context of the question so there we need to say right there's evidence of a decrease in the rate of deformed blood cells or the number of deformed blood cells but anything like that which links back to the question and there you have it and like i said you can substitute quite a few different words within here but something along the lines of there's evidence to suggest that the rate of deformed blood cells has decreased. And all I'm doing really is taking stuff from what we've got within here. We're looking at the number of red blood cells that are deformed. So if you look along here, we've got the deformed blood cells occurring randomly at a rate within our blood. And that's essentially all I've done. 
I've reworded it within the answer. Okay. Again, you can take it from this bit here as well. Okay. Uh, and that's all there really is to these questions. So very much like before, just with Poisson, um, this video, the questions could be one tail or two tailed. Have a go a few questions, check your answers, and uh, let me know in the comments anything you want to know or you're unsure about.